Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about parallel computing. Now, just to recap, we've already talked about multi-threaded programming, where with most implementations, the threads are all running in a single CPU. So even though it may appear to the user as if more than one thread is running simultaneously, in fact, only one actually is. The threads are being switched in and out of a single core of a single CPU so quickly that the user is not able to tell that things aren't actually happening at the same time. With parallel programming, on the other hand, we're going to make use of the redundant hardware that we have on our computers. We're going to make use of the fact that most modern CPUs have multiple cores and most motherboards can support multiple CPUs. So if we do have a dual core single CPU machine, we can have more than one, actually two threads running at the same time. Whereas the primary reason for multi-threading was to make it appear as if more than one thing was happening, to add functionality into our program in a way that users think more than one thing is happening at the same time. With parallel programming, the idea is to actually speed up the execution of our program. Multi-threading, in fact, slows down your program. It allows us to do things we couldn't otherwise do in a single threaded manner, but it is going to be slightly slower because there's overhead in spawning the threads and context switching them in and out of the CPU. With parallel programming, we're going to make use of the fact that we have more than one core, more than one CPU on our computer so that more than one thing actually can be running at the same time. Now, everything we've already discussed with concurrency and synchronization issues still applies with parallel programming. We're still operating in a shared memory space. We still will have shared resources, shared variables. So we may have to deal with concurrency issues and solving them through the use of monitors, locks, and semaphores. If you want to see what hardware we have in our computers, on Windows, you can hit the window key plus R and then type MS Info 32. On Mac, go to your Apple icon, then go to About This Mac and System Report. The one on the left is a Windows system information window, and you see down towards the bottom, there's one item that says processor. The processor on that computer is an Intel Core i5-6300U CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz. But what's more important for us, for our discussion today, is what it says on the right hand side. Two cores, four logical processors. That means that this is a dual core machine. So there's two cores inside of the one CPU on that computer. However, that CPU is hyper-threaded, meaning that to the operating system, it appears as if there are four logical processors. The operating system will send up to four processes to that CPU at a time, thinking that they're all going to be running at the same time. However, the CPU only has two cores, so only two of those processes will actually be running at a time. The firmware running on top of the CPU will allow the other two processes that are sent to be switched back and forth in a manner uh, similar to multi-threading, to context switching in a multi-threaded manner. It's going to be happening in firmware running on top of the CPU, so it's going to be faster than if the operating system was responsible for it. If you look at the MacBook Pro system report on the right-hand side, you'll see there's one processor with two cores. Now, it's a little harder when you're looking at the MacBook Pro one to see 
if that CPU is hyper-threaded. It's telling you the number of physical cores. So my suggestion, if you want to find out a little bit more about your CPU, is to look it up online. So for the Intel Core i5-6300U, I searched for it online, pulled back the spec sheet from Intel. You can see the number of cores, the number of threads being four, it's hyper-threaded. It tells you the uh, frequency, so your CPU speed, along with a lot of other information about the CPU. This is probably the best way that you're going to be able to find out the most information about your CPU. Now in Java, the way that we um, implement multi-threading is either by directly instantiating a thread or using the runnable interface or by using a class called the executor service. The executor service is a managing class. So it allows us to execute multiple threads, but it manages them so that we have a little bit of status information. How many threads are currently running? Uh, are, have they all completed? And so on. With parallel programming, there's a class that's similar to the executor service. It's called the fork join pool. The fork join pool is the managing class. So when we have parallel threads, the fork join pool will be able to execute them, start them in different cores of different CPUs, and give us information back about how they're working. With parallel programming, uh, there is one type of algorithm that is ideally suited to provide us with the most speed up. The idea behind parallel programming is we are trying to make our programs run faster. We're not just trying to make it appear to the user as if more than one thing is happening at the same time, but in fact, we are actually running more than one thread simultaneously. So we want a speed up in our program. We want our program to run faster using parallel programming. If you look at the pseudocode I have at the top of this slide, if some condition is true, do the work directly, else split the work into multiple pieces, invoke the pieces and wait for results. Typically this is done in a recursive fashion. You've learned a number of different types of algorithms already, most likely in an algorithms class, such as greedy algorithms, divide and conquer, dynamic programming, NP-complete, and so on. This pseudocode that I have written here uh, should resemble what you know as divide and conquer. Divide and conquer algorithms are going to give you a lot of speed up with parallel programming. We can take the problem, divide it into the smaller subproblems, and send each of those subproblems to a different core. Let that core solve the subproblem and then send the result back up to whichever process forked that one. We call when we start a new parallel thread we call it forking the thread. In Java there is a class, it's an abstract class called fork join task. There are two subclasses that implement the abstract methods in this class, recursive task and recursive action. Recursive task can return a result back to us, whereas recursive action does not. This is something that's different from our multi-threading code. With multi-threading, the run method returns nothing. It's public void run. However, with parallel programming, if you use a recursive task, you can actually have that class return something back to you uh, from the compute method. The compute method in parallel programming is equivalent to the run method in multi-threading. If you don't need a value returned back to you, you can use the recursive action class. That class is going to work similar to how we uh, wrote our multi-threading code, where the compute method in our case would have a void return type. Okay, the next slide I have here explains a number of the different methods 
uh, and classes that we have available to us with parallel programming. As I mentioned, the fork join task class, the abstract class, has a method inside of it, compute. That's the method that we need to override um, in our code. The compute method is what will execute once that parallel thread is put into a different core on your computer. If you want to start that parallel thread, you will call the fork method. That would be equivalent to the start method that we had in multi-threading. It will cause that thread to move to a different core and it will start executing the compute method. Of course, this is all at the mercy of the scheduling algorithm. The join method in parallel programming works in the same way that the join method does in multi-threading. If you join one thread to another, the original thread will not continue executing until the other one has finished executing. On the fork join pool, the managing class that's responsible for parallel programming, there is an invoke method. The invoke method is going to execute the compute method asynchronously and have it return the value. It's a fork followed by a join call. So the thread that calls invoke will not continue executing until the other thread that you have just forked finishes. On the other hand, there is an execute method on the fork join pool. With the execute method, that is merely going to call a fork without a join. So no value is going to get returned, but your current thread will continue executing in a parallel manner while your other thread also executes in a different core of the CPU. Now I've provided a table here comparing the multi-threading classes, interfaces, and methods to the parallel ones. The one that I want to point out here is the method to override in parallel programming is called compute. If we are inheriting from the recursive action class, then the compute method is not going to return anything. It's a void method. On the other hand, if we inherit from recursive task, the compute method is going to return a generic object. In my slide, I have it as the variable v you're going to be able to specify the type of variable you would like for compute to return. When you instantiate the recursive task, you need to parameterize it. However you parameterize that class is what will also be returned from the compute method when that method is called, when it's forked and then joined against. <coughs> the running time in parallel programming should be faster than the running time if you were writing single-threaded or uh, multi-threaded code. That's the idea with parallel programming. We're trying to make our code run faster. However, just because you write parallel code doesn't mean you're going to experience an improvement in your execution speed. There's overhead involved in forking these <coughs> threads, in moving these threads to different cores and then executing them there. So um, you shouldn't always write parallel code if there's something you're able to do inside of a single thread. Parallel code, as I mentioned earlier, is ideally suited for divide and conquer algorithms. By no means is that the only type of algorithm that will experience an improvement in speed using parallel programming, but it's definitely one that will experience a significant improvement in speed. Keep in mind that if you were to fork more threads than you have cores in your computer, let's say we have four cores in our computer and we fork eight threads. Each of those threads will go to a different core. So the first four will go to four different cores. The second four are going to be placed in those same four again though. So we're going to end up with two threads inside of each core of our computer. Those threads are now going to be operating in a concurrent manner. Context switching, time slicing, similar to how they operate in multi-threading. So we still could get an improvement in speed since we're utilizing the redundant hardware that we have on our computer, but we're probably not going to get as much if we were to uh, fork a large number of threads because now we're going to have a lot of them inside of each core of our CPU. 
The main reason that we write multi-threaded code is to add functionality to our program. The main reason for writing parallel code is to improve the actual runtime of our code. I've had people ask me, why would we not just always write parallel code since anything we can do in multi-threading, we can also do in parallel. Although that is true, you need to keep in mind that you may be slowing down the overall execution of your computer. With multi-threading, the threads are going to go into a single core of a single CPU, leaving the other cores in your computer free for the operating system to schedule other processes or its own internal processes. With parallel programming, we're going to be utilizing all of the cores that we have available on our computer. Now, even though the operating system may preempt us and put its own processes into the cores if it needs to, it's going to have more processes to contend with. So it may actually slow down the overall execution speed of your computer, even though your one program may execute slightly faster. So keep that in mind of what your end goal is. Is it to execute your individual program faster, or would you like to have the entire operating system, all of the processes, be faster? Based on the answer to that, you would then determine whether you want to parallelize code that you could write in a multi-threaded fashion, or whether it may be better to leave it multi-threaded. Thanks so much for listening. If you watch our next video, you'll see um, how we can actually code this, and you'll see an example execution of parallel programming compared to single-threaded.